morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever in the world you are. Today, we're going to do a cross-culture exchange program, and I'm your host, Alethea. I'm the Pada Youth Ambassador, and I'm very excited today to have with us multiple student chapters scattered around Asia Pacific, and we're going to go on a backpacking adventure together with them to see their hometowns. So thank you very much. Uh, my guest speakers for today are representing Pada Australia UQ student chapter, Pada Bangladesh Dhaka University student chapter, uh, Pada Macau student chapter, Pada Nepal student chapter, Pada New Zealand AUT student chapter, Pada Philippines University of Mindanao student chapter, as well as Pada Singapore TP student chapter. So thank you so much for all our participating student chapters for joining me today to do this cross-cultural exchange program. Uh, and we're, this is a live event, so all our individual student chapter leaders and members will be tuning in from wherever they are in the world to share their home, hometown with us. And really, before we begin, I just wanted to say that the reason why we decided to do a cross-cultural exchange is because we learned that human-centric travel is so important right now in this day and age. And human-centric travel helps us really to understand others, understand people who live different lives and live in different uh, situations and environments from us. And travel has always kind of helped us learn more about the world and that's really what we want to achieve today. As well as the fact that a cross-cultural exchange program led by student chapters around the world allows us to see the world through the eyes of the youth. And this therefore uses Pada Youth as an inspirational platform to allow student chapters and youths to have a voice and represent their hometowns, their countries, their schools, and themselves to tell the stories that they care about telling and share the culture that matters to them. So yes, thank you for joining us, everybody. Um, one note for the audience, this is an interactive session with a Q&A in between presentations as well as right at the end. So please use the Q&A function below as well as use the chat to introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and we want to get to know you as well. So without further ado, let me introduce you the two lovely ladies that are representing Para Australia UQ student chapter, Tara and Amanda. Thank you very much for joining us, Tara and Amanda. Uh, Tara is the co-president of events for Pata Australia Student Chapter and Amanda is the treasurer for the student chapter and both of them are passionate foodies uh, and aim to deliver the best value to their members all the way in Brisbane, Australia. Amanda and Tara, over to you. Thanks Ali and thank you for that introduction. Let me just share my screen with you guys. Um, so welcome to Australia. Thank you for tuning in and joining us. Um, I'm going to be sharing one day in Brisbane, which is where the University of Queensland is located and where myself and Tara both live. Uh, before I get started, I just wanted to start off with an acknowledgement of country. Um, so this is a typical protocol when we host events in Australia um, to pay respects to the First Nations people. So I acknowledge the First Nations people as the original owners of the land for which this presentation is taking place today. I recognize the country north and south of the Brisbane River as the home of both the Turbo and the Gara nations, and I pay deep respects to all elders past, present and future. Uh, so some of you may be familiar with Brisbane, but you're probably more likely to be familiar with cities like Sydney, Melbourne, or tourist destinations like the Great Barrier Reef or Uluru. Uh, so Brisbane is located in the state of Queensland and it's often a transit destination um, to go to other tourist destinations. Um, it's a one hour drive from Surfers Paradise and some other iconic beaches on the Queensland coast. Uh, so Brisbane was established on the Brisbane River, which is still an important part of life today. Um, so we're going to start our journey at West End, which is like a trendy neighborhood cafe area. Uh, we're going to go and cuddle some koalas at the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. And then we're going to head downstream to Kangaroo Point for some rock climbing um, and then on to Story Bridge where we're going to visit a local brewery. Uh, so first off, um, to start the day, we're going to fuel up um, with some breakfast and some coffee. So now you're in Australia, you have to shorten all your words. So breakfast becomes preppy. Um, there's definitely an emphasis with food in Australia of farm to table. 
and you'll find lots of vegetarian and vegan options. Similarly, with your coffee, you'll have all different milks to choose from, your oats and your almonds. Um, something I noticed when I've traveled is that there is much more franchises overseas. In Australia, we don't really, franchises haven't really taken off. Um, so most of our coffee shops are independently owned. People want to know their barista, where their coffee's from, who roasts it. You can go to even cupping sessions where you taste different flavors and different coffees or blend your own. Uh, so once we're all fueled up, we're going to head to Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. Um, so this sanctuary supports the conservation efforts of koalas, for which research suggests their populations are drastically declining and they are becoming more endangered. So it's not actually legal to hold a koala in every state in Australia, but it is legal to do so in Queensland. So Brisbane is your opportunity to do, to do this. Um, they do have a limited amount of people per day that can hold the koalas. So you want to go nice and early, you can get your photos. Um, while you're there, you can see some other native wildlife like your kangaroos. Um, next up, we're going to head downstream. We're going to stay pretty active and we're going to head to Kangaroo Point to do some rock climbing and some abseiling. Um, so this rock wall would overlook the CBD, so it's really beautiful. Um, it was formed um, via like, volcanic activity millions of years ago and is now the remnant of a mining site. So you'll find lots of people here running and walking, doing their barbecues, um, having picnics, going kayaking if heights aren't really your thing. Um, and once we're all finished at Kangaroo Point, we're going to jump on a city cat. So a city cat is um, this little guy here, like the bus of Brisbane, you go up and down the, uh, the river on it. And we're gonna head down to Story Bridge. Um, so Story Bridge is, um, connecting the south and the north of Brisbane. And you can actually take a tour and walk up there and get some photos as well. But underneath is a local brewery. Uh, so just like we take our coffee very seriously, we also take our beer very seriously. You'll find lots of microbreweries all over the city. Um, and this is one where you can sit by the water, uh, get a flight of beers, decide which one you like best. Um, and then you're right in the heart of the city. So you can walk up, you'll find a melting pot of different cuisines. Um, modern Australian, Japanese, German, um, Thai, any style that you like. So we're very lucky to be able to have all different cultures of food um, in Australia. Um, that is all from me. So if you have any questions, if you're coming to Australia, please feel free to contact us. We would be happy to show you around. And I'll pass back to you, Ali. Thank you so much for that lovely presentation, Amanda, and that stroll down the river. I absolutely love it. So right now, I want to open us to some uh, questions. Does anyone have any questions for the Australia student chapter, Amanda and Tara? Yes, hi. Um, what food would you recommend um, to try in Australia, Brisbane? Um, to try, like, food-wise? Yes. Oh, um... I would say a, a pie, an Australian pie. That's a pretty classic Australian dish. Okay, thank you. What is an Australian pie? Do you want to, do you want to explain that, Tara? Sure, so an Australian pie, we call it a meat pie. Um, and we know that typically a lot of pies are seen as being sweet, but in Australia we have, it's, um, it's basically like ground beef or like beef mince um, encased in pastry and it's a small pie. It's, it's, hand sized um, and you can get that at your local like gas station, your fuel station, you can get it in your grocery store, you can get it at lots of bakeries, it's really popular at bakeries and lots of Australians get their coffee and their pie. Oh that sounds amazing, it sounds like a good, it sounds like a good midday snack. <laughs> so thank you very much Amanda and Tara for bringing us to Brisbane, Australia to really experience a little bit of the foodie culture and the coffee and the breweries. Uh, that's, really, that's really an experience that I really want to do one day in my life. So next up, we're going to travel to a completely different continent, to Bangladesh, uh, representing the Pada Bangladesh Dhaka University student chapter is Sayeda and Musfiq. Hi Sayeda, hi Musfiq. Hello. 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 Hi. So Sayeda is the president of the student chapter and she performs as their external spokesperson of, uh, who regularly interacts with 
Pada headquarters, university, government officials, and other stakeholders of the tourism industry. And Musfik is their promotion and IT coordinator. And I really like what uh, he wrote in his bio here. He says he has a proven track record of helping and rescuing the student chapter from all sorts of technical issues. Very glad to have you today with us, Saida. Thank you. Thank you. Please take it away. Yeah. Okay, welcome. Welcome to Bangladesh. Uh, today you are going to uh, tr have a wonderful trip with me, Saida, and me, Mushfiq Ahmed. Before starting our tour with Tangwar Hau, let's talk about something about Tangwar Hau. Tangwar Hau is a unique wetland for national importance. It is bordered with India and it is located in the northeastern part of Bangladesh. It is consists of 46 villages. Tangwar Hau has different views in different seasons. Like in monsoon, it is called mother fishery for Bangladesh. And in dry season, it uh, is used as a croplands and what an amazing view. In winter season, it works as a home for 200 types of migratory birds. Isn't it awesome? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I think as it is uh, monsoon, so we will choose monsoon trip. So uh, in early morning, we will start with a car from Shunamganj to Tahirpur. Then from Tahirpur, we will buy foodstuffs and water, and we will start our boat journey towards Tangwar Hall. In the middle of the Tangwar Hall, we will have a small swamp forest and a tower from from the top of the tower, you will have a bird's eye view, amazing bird's eye view. From there, we will go to take a It will take 40 minutes. Meanwhile, we will take our lunch on the top of the roof of the boat. That in the take a you will find a lake, Shiraji Lake. You can have boating there. From the take a we will have an awesome bike trip to the Baritila, which is the end of of our Bangladesh from Baritila, we will see Jadukata River view and the hill view of India. Beside uh, Baritila, here is a Bombax tree garden which has different view. In the monsoon is green and in the March, uh, February to March view is red. And this is all, but if you want, you can stay in the boat. So here is a view of inside boat and outside boat at night. So let's visualize the trip through lens. Uh, can we have the video? Are you a अबाक तो एक चौके छाया कापे भाई अभी माने हर ये जावर नियों ने ये खाने हर अब बोले पार्टी पे गोते के ले गोटा शो बाकी जेले शतर को बाय बाय हर अब जाएगा खुजे मोरी गोटा शो बाती जेले शतर को बाए बाए जाएगा खुजे मोरी Shop ne ama shuri re ke och 
What a beautiful presentation and video, beautiful video. I think it really makes us want to just hop on a plane and go to Bangladesh right now. So are there any questions for the Bangladesh student chapter and their presentation? Questions, please. I was just wondering, you've got beautiful seasons in Bangladesh. When is monsoon season? Okay, monsoon is from uh, like May to Ju uh, July, May to July. Then the post monsoon is also good for trip because uh, the uh, actually this is the water of rain. The the field is actually cropland, and after the rain it fills up with water. So um, from July, uh, from May to August, September is very good for boat trip. So basically now, now is the time yes, to visit yes. Bangladesh. <laughs> yes. I really love it. Um, we also have a question from the audience. How is the weather right now? Uh, uh, it's uh, too much rain water because um, too much rainy because of this rain water. Uh, there is a situation of flood in that area. Mm -hmm. So there's also that duality between beauty yes. and like destruction. Yeah. Okay, it's really, it's really beautiful and the fact that there's, it's the same place but it looks completely different during, depending on different seasons, that's really magical and I think I've been living in my, I've been living in a city all my life so I can't even imagine being able to live in a place with, surrounded by such beauty. So <laughs> you're welcome, you're most welcome. Yeah, so thank you so much for that presentation and that video. All of us want to go to Bangladesh right now. Thank so you. next up, we're going to go to a city, which is something that I'm quite familiar with because I've lived in a city all my life. But this city is very, very different. So Para Macau's SAR student chapter, please come online. Tell us all about yourselves. Uh, tell us all about your city. So both Tracy and Stella were born and raised in China, and they're currently pursuing their bachelor degree of tourism business management in Macau Institute for Tourism Studies. So thank you very much for joining us today, Tracy and Stella. Please take it away and bring us back to the cities. Okay. Okay, hello everyone, I'm Stella and I will talk about one day trip in Macau with Tracy. We are from Pata Macau student chapter. Talking about Macau, um, I think most people immediately think of ones of St. Paul and gambling. But today we are going to introduce Macau's niche attraction and local cuisine. We hope that you can find a different Macau through our introduction. A day in Macau beginning with draining mo canonic morning tea. Opened in 1962, Longhua Tea House is the oldest tea house in Macau. And the tea house used to be one of the filming locations of the man from Macau. Every object in the tea house tells us its long history.
And after eating and drinking, we will take you to one of the Macau's landmarks, the Macau Tower. Young people who like exciting sport here can experience all kind of instant and excitement. You can choose different exciting sport with the different heights and speed according to your courage. The difference between the sky jump and bungee jumping is that the sky jump you don't feel free for with bounce and you can jump in a standing position and stay that way to the ground. And if you don't like exciting sports, you can also enjoy a variety of entertainment, shopping and dining at the Macau Tower. Here you will find a 2D, 3D theater showing the latest blockbuster gambling excitement with the chance to win a jackpot play out. And a huge variety of shopping options from the best European luxury to a huge range of children's toys. And from the fine dining establishment offering the authentic Chinese cuisine to delicious cafe style, fair and irresistible. And local delicious, that delicious Macau Tower has something for everyone. And whether it is high hygienic excitement and retail VIP, or fun and relaxation you are looking for, there are truly something for everyone at Macau Tower. Next, I will pop to Tracy. Hello, I'm Tracy and I will talk about Kong Wan. This is the backyard and one of the most colorful areas in Macau. In here, you can find flowers, traditional alleys, and buildings painted in different colors. It's definitely a wonderful place for photo taking. And it's so pleasure to walk around the seaside, enjoy the beautiful view, and delicious egg tarts. But talking about egg tarts, I have to mention a bakery house. It's called the Lost Stores Bakery House, which is the most traditional and well known egg tart brand in Macau. Many tourism consider Ecta there are the most delicious ones in Macau, and I personally think so. Uh, next is the Temple of St. Francis de Villier, which is a church in Colombian. It's not so large or popular, but it's a setting place for many movies and TV scenes. For example, the movie Look for a Star, produced by Hong Kong, and the TV scenes Princess Hours, produced by Korea. In Colombian, you can taste many mechanic food. This food are made from Portugal, but include a lot by the food from Guangdong, Paris, South Asia, and Africa. And here are some main dishes. The first one, main tree is the cooking method that cut meat into small pieces. Some mechanic food are from Canton, like the sofu clam, and some are a little bit different from the ones served in Portuguese restaurants, like French bacalhau and base oxtail. Some can still be found in Portugal. And the remaining three. Uh, it's quite interesting that African chicken can never find in Africa and Portuguese chicken can never find in Portugal. They are both mechanic food and named after it because the seasoning they use. Also, this food are daily food for locals. It's not very popular outside Macau and not many visitors even know them. Some dishes even disappear because no one inherited. Therefore, I would like to encourage you to have a try. It's a tradition. It's an intangible heritage and many restaurants and organizations are actively doing something to protect and promote. We all hope that more people can enjoy this food. Well, this is all about our trip in Macau and I, we hope to meet you here someday. Thank you and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Oh, thank you so much for showing us all that yummy dim sum. I can't wait to go and eat dim sum and egg tarts. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah. Please, does anyone have any questions for Tracy and Stella? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, hi. Uh, it's really interesting what you have showed. I am really interested about uh, Macau Tower Adventure because I am an adventure person. So I'm thinking that uh, I'm a heavyweight person, like 80, 85. So is it okay for me to jump from the tower? Is the weight uh, any kind of barrier there? Yes, yes. You can go there and buy the ticket for bungee jumping or sky jump and choose the project you like. Yeah, you can jump it out. Yeah, it's cool. And so you know, in many TV scenes or something like that, they, they just do this. And it's, it's quite cool. Okay. Tracy, Stella, have you guys bungee jumped yourselves from the tower? Not tower? yet. Not yet. Not yet. We are scared. <laughs> we are, yes, we are a little bit scared, yeah. If you are <laughs> raising up, just come and do it. So when Sayeda visits you in Macau, three of you would jump together, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, just... <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, thank you very much, Sayada, for the question. Thank you, Tracy thank and you. Stella, for sharing with us your beautiful culture and that beautiful seaside town as well. Such a hidden gem in like a city that we think we know, but we don't really know. So thank you very much for sharing with us about your hometown and your culture. Um, next up, we are going to Nepal. So from the Pacific, uh, from Pada's Nepal student chapter, we have with us Surendra, who is the chairperson, the chairman of the student chapter since 2019. Surendra, please take us to Nepal. Um, please unmute yourself. Thank you, Jessie. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, let me sh share my screen. Well, uh, namaste and a, a very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on the part of the world you are in. I'm Surendra. Uh, on behalf of Pada Nepal Student Chapter, today I'm going to present on the uh, uh, one of the one of the hidden gems of uh, Nepal, uh, which is Jagdishpur Reservoir. It is the uh, biggest man-made reservoir of our country. Well, it is also listed in the Ramsar site in 2000. Three. So uh, in, in Nepal, we have one international airport uh, with two international airports uh, coming very soon. Well, from uh, Kathmandu, it takes 30 minutes flight to, uh, to the nearest airport to uh, Jagdishpur Reservoir. Well, uh, if you want to experience the drive, uh, it'll be a wonderful eight hour drive from Kathmandu to Jagdishpur Reservoir. Well, let's start our day. So. In the morning at 7.30 a.m., uh, we'll have our breakfast and start our day uh, with a visit to Lumbini. So Lumbini is the birthplace of Gautam Buddha, who is the founder of Buddhism religion and also known as the light of Asia. So in Lumbini, we'll be visiting a lot of monuments, temples, monasteries, and stupas. Some of them are, this is Mayadevi Temple, the Eternal Peace Lamp, this is the Thai Monastery, and this is the world peace stupa. So after visiting Lumbini uh, at 10 a.m., we will proceed to the end of the destination, which is uh, Jagdishpur Reservoir itself. So we'll have one hour wonderful drive to Jagdishpur. And at 11 a.m. upon the arrival, we'll receive a very warm hospitality and welcome from the local Taru community. You can see in the picture. So. After, after the welcome, we'll be transferred to the local homestay where we'll freshen up and interact with the locals before having our lunch. Remember, we'll, we'll be having a delicious uh, taro delicacies. There are a lot of varieties, which includes the timura. It, it's a local chicken made in a local style and with natural ingredients. It's really spicy and yummy as well. You can customize your taste. Uh, uh, so there is uh, tar a local taru, uh, I, mean, I mean community lunch or snack set, and we have crabs, which is uh, also uh, popular known as gangata, and snails, which is gongi, and all of these delicacies are really naturally accompanied by the local liquor called jad or rakshi. I mean, it's famously known as jad or rakshi. Well, after enjoying the food and culture of the locals out there, we'll be now finally visiting the reservoir, the main attraction of the day. So we have the options of walking, riding a bicycle. Uh, we have also the option of boating. And uh, however, the main attraction of this place is bird watching. So we have 168 species of birds, out of which 76 species are migrated from the countries like Siberia, Russia, China, Uzbekistan, Mongolia, and many other countries, they, they come here in the winter and then they, they get back to their home in the lovely spring. So uh, let's have a look at, a look at the pictures of the wonderful Jagdishpur. And remember, we can also see some of the mountains when the weather is clear from this location. It, it, it's uh, re really in the plain Tarai, but, but still we can uh, see the wonderful view of the mountains, but uh, I mean, in a small scale. 
So after enjoying the nature, it's time for us to, it'll be a time for us to enjoy the culture of the local Taru community. Uh, we'll, we'll be having a wonderful uh, experience of the local Taru community's culture, dance, I mean, uh, a set of dance, and there are two or three, uh, I mean, many dances, uh, which they will be offering during the cultural program. And welcome to Nepal, welcome to Jagdishpur. Let's go to the, through the video. Alicia, can you play the video? for sharing with us a piece of your culture. That was an amazing video. It really makes me want to jump onto a plane again and fly straight to Nepal. You're really welcome. You're really welcome. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions for Nepal and for Surendra? Yes, I have a question. Um, as I saw in your video, I saw there are many birds uh, swimming on the lake. I want to know when and where is the uh, when is the best season and where is the best place for the tourists to see the dead birds. Thank well, you. Th thank you very much for your question. I appreciate it. Uh, during the winter season, birds from many countries like Siberia, um, Russia, Mongolia, and other countries uh, they come and uh, stay here in Nepal, in, in the Jagdishpur Reservoir. And during that time, there'll be a lot of species uh, in, in the winter uh, to, to just uh, view, view the birds. But however, however uh, the pre-monsoon is the best season for you to, um, uh, I mean, uh, watch the birds out there. Uh, you'll be seeing some birds laying the eggs and feeding the, feeding the um, I mean, uh, the small one. <laughs> And uh, it'll be a really, really good experience for you. And uh, during the uh, autumn season, I mean, uh, after the spring, I mean, during the spring season, yeah, during the spring season, you'll be able to see the mountains as well. And that, that'll be a really good experience for you by being in like uh, a low place, I mean, a lower place, place and uh, seeing a mountain from there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Surendra, for sharing with us a slice of your culture. Um, it, it looks like such a great experience. I wish I could experience it for myself. I so, was just here in Nepal someday. <laughs> one day, one day. One day, hopefully one day soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Next up, we're going to a completely different continent, New Zealand. Um, the Pada New Zealand AUT student chapter is represented by Hanshika, also known as Hansi, and Roxanne, also known as Roxy. So Hansi and Roxy, do you guys want to turn on your video and join us today? Yes, um, it says the host has stopped our video. So if someone can... <laughs> One moment. <laughs> Thank you. We're not allowed to see. Yeah. <laughs> 
So um, just to give you guys an introduction, Hansi is actually cur currently pursuing her PhD in hospitality from the School of Hospitality and Tourism in Auckland University of Technology. And Roxanne is originally from Belgium, but she grew up in various different continents, including Africa, South America, Asia, and North America. Roxanne is also a PhD student. So thank you very much for joining us today from your very busy schedules. Is your video okay? Oh, I don't think so. Noah says our host stopped it. Can we please turn on the video? <laughs> oh, there we go. Our host has let us. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, um, so. Thank you so much for joining us. Sorry about that video. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So, hi everyone. Good morning. Shall I start? Yes. Good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening. Okay, I'm Hansi, uh, representing Auckland University of Technology, Pata student chapter, and Roxy. My name is Roxanne, but most people call me Roxy. And I'm also, as you had the introduction, I'm a PhD student at AUT. All right, uh, let's start. Uh, moving forward. Kia ora, everyone. This is the way we welcome or we say hello in New Zealand. We'll quickly show you how to do that shoulder to shoulder nose to nose and eyes to eyes and say kia ora kia ora a second all right then moving forward i'll quickly show you where new zealand is because sometimes still in some maps i mean in world maps new zealand is still missing and sometimes some people they don't know where this new zealand is and some people, they think New Zealand also a part of Australia. Actually, it is not. New Zealand is a country, it's an island. Uh, it is located in the Southwestern Pacific. And New Zealand, we have two different uh, islands, North Island and the South Island. So today, we are going to take you on a road trip in North Island. So Auckland is located in the North Island. Okay, that's simply uh, what I explained where we are located. All right, uh, New Zealand is such an amazing country to be honest with my experiences and I would say it's a magical destination and it's very popular touristic location as well. So when you come to New Zealand you can experience a magical uh, environment and the culture, Maori and the Kiwi culture, uh, as well as uh, you can experience lots of activities as well. So this is our simple itinerary. So we have city attractions. Uh, Rox will explain the city attractions. Then Auckland to Hobbiton and Hobbiton to Rotrua to experience Maori cultural activities. Okay, Roxy, let's start. Thank you, Hansi. Hey. I am excited to start in Auckland. So most arrivals either arrive in Auckland or Christchurch. And since Hansi and I are based in Auckland, we'll take you around our city. Um, so here you can see on the top left corner, there is the Sky City Tower, which from that tower, you can see beautiful Mount Eden, where that girl is with her little hat. And you can also see Rangatotu, which is one of the youngest volcanoes in uh, New Zealand. And on the bottom right, you can see the Auckland War Museum, which is where we're going to end the tour. So from Auckland, it's about an hour drive to Hobbiton, which is where Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit was filmed. It's an amazing trilogy about little people trying to find a magical ring and then putting it in a ring of fire. <laughs> it's great. Um, on the way to Hobbiton, you can actually see these geothermal hot springs. Um, geothermal activity is basically when rainwater goes into the ground and percolates underground to either come back up to the surface as uh, geysers or hot springs or even boiling mud. And over here you can see that they come up as hot springs, which is absolutely stunning. It really looks like you're on Mars or something. Um, and then on the way back from Hobbiton, we can go slightly different direction and you'll go into the Maori cultural village and the Maori are the indigenous people of New Zealand. They have beautiful cultural festivals and ceremonies and dances and if Jesse can share with us the video now that'd be great. You can see a little bit of a traditional dance. Oh Paka, world famous Haka. 
Is it coming? Yeah. left you quite excited to come visit us um, and if you have any questions just feel free to email us or check out our Facebook page and we hope to see you soon. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank you so much Roxy and Hansi for that amazing presentation that really brings us to so many different uh, so many different countries because I consider Middle Earth as a different place altogether. So thank you. Um, does anyone have any questions for New Zealand? No questions. <laughs> we do have one question from the audience that's quite okay. true. Is it true there are more cows than humans in New Zealand? Sorry? Is it true that there are more cows than uh, humans no. in New Zealand? There are, there are more sheep. More ah. sheep. <laughs> it's like eight sheep per person. That's yeah. a percentage. So we have more sheep than people in New Zealand. <laughs> so maybe not cows but sheep yes yes more sheep we have more cows as well but comparing to cows more sheep <laughs> and i'm just seeing in the comments to pauline from hawaii that's awesome i love saying aloha and thank you for participating okay thank you all enjoyed thank you very much the yeah the video really left a huge impression and it's really a long lasting impression as well so I can't wait to I can't wait to get my ass to New Zealand. It's gonna be great once I once I manage to get onto a plane. Yeah. <laughs> so next up, we're going back to Southeast Asia to the Philippines, representing uh, the Philippines University of Mindanao student chapter is Gail and Khalil. Hi, Gail. Hi. Hi. Hi, Ali. Hi, so everyone. This student chapter is actually our most recent, youngest, newest student chapter to be birthed. So thank you very much, Gail and Khalil, for joining us today. All right, thanks for that introduction, Ali. So I'll now show you our um, uh, screen. All right, um, sorry. Something. Is it on full screen now? Uh, it's not full screen yet, but you can maybe all the way at the top next to this tiny little orange dot. Is that the slightly more, slightly above? Um, a tab? Is that you can, you can press F5. Yeah, I did press F5. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, is it? Um, wait, let me, let me 
to do that again. I'm really sorry, everyone. No, that's okay. Technology always fails us at the moment where we need yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. Why, why is it like this? So, uh, Khalil, while Gail tries to put the PowerPoint on full screen, why don't you tell us a little bit about your university? Yeah, our university is uh, it's not only uh, popular in uh, in Philippines, but also in popular uh, world class. It is a world class uh, university, and uh, we have a. Uh, uh, a good, a good um, students here that can uh, uh, were uh, very hospitable and and it is a non sectarian uh, education. It is a non sectarian, so uh, there's no uh, no race matter. So if you are black, white, Muslims, or what what religions you have, you are fully uh, accepted here in our university. It's really nice to know that. It's really nice to know that everyone's accepted. Everyone is there to learn as well. Yeah. yeah and I think that's something that's really beautiful about the Philippine culture because you guys are so welcoming. You guys are known for your hospitality. Indeed. Okay. So, Gail, do you want to start the presentation? Yes, sure. Sorry for that technicalities again, everyone. So, let's start. Mabuhay o badayao. I'm Gail. I'm Jam and we'll virtually guide you to the beautiful Davao city and the sights to see. Is everyone ready? All right, so Davao life is here where nature meets halfway with modernization. Now, maybe some of you are still unfamiliar about Davao and wonder where in Philippines is Davao city. So I'm gonna show you the map of the Philippines. So we're located just right here in the Southeastern portion of the Mindanao Island. So. Did you know that Davao City is the biggest city in the Philippines in terms of land area? Moving on, the people in Davao City are called Davaoenos, and Davaoenos are peace-loving people. We rank as second among the safest cities in Southeast Asia behind Chiang Mai, Thailand, and we religiously observe ordinances here such as no smoking in public places and even stringent speed limits. Here we are the ba fruit basket of the Philippines, here are the fruits that you can usually find here. First is durian, where some people say it smells like hell, but tastes like heaven. We also have mangosteen, marang, lansones, rambutan, and more. Davao City is a melting pot of different cultures, traditions, and religions. And we are very proud of that because um, it is a diverse but a unique city where everyone can experience and see our culture. So, so Gail, uh, when is the best time to visit Davao? Yes, great question. So this is a highly anticipated event here in Davao. That's the Kadayawan Festival. It is tagged as the king of festivals in the Philippines where it brings together locals and travelers alike for good food, drinks, and music. Here you can experience in different Mindanao communities dance on the streets, or in our language, we call it Indak Indak Sa Kadalanan where they wear these tribal costumes, as you can see here in this picture. And there are more ways to discover Davao's culture when you visit the Kadayawan village. Here you can see the 11 ethno-linguistic tribes and their culture, cultural houses, which allows them to show people how they strive to keep their culture alive, even in modern times. Okay, which destinations in Davao are we gonna take everyone? Because there are so many exciting things and places to go here. Yes, absolutely. So there's so much to explore here in Davao. And now we're going to take you to top eight destinations here. So buckle up, everyone. Our first stop is the Eden Nature Park. This is a 95% man-made park and is home to over 100,000 pine trees. Here you can enjoy camping, trekking, um, fishing, fishing, horseback riding with your family and friends. And if you're ready to overcome your fear of heights, you can try one of their highlights just like this in the picture, the sky cycle. This is our national bird. It's called the Philippine Eagle. It is one of the world's rarest and largest bird, and it can only be spotted in top four major islands here in the Philippines, and Davao City is one of them. You can 
witness this critically endangered bird here in Philippine Eagle Center, where they are bred and taken care of by the volunteers. So where else are we going to take them, John? Okay, our third destination is just 10 minutes away, Eagle Center, the Malagos Garden Resort. Malagos Garden Resort, an agreed ecotourism resort that offers an all-inclusive hospitality experience from dining, accommodation, recreation well to wellness activities in a sustainable farm setting. In Malagos Garden Resort, everyone can get to interact with the animals and feed them, just like in the picture. You can also try their award-winning chocolates. Unleash your inner chocolate eater and make your own chocolates, adding different toppings such as dried fruits, peanuts, and more. And they also have parks where you can feel like Alice in Wonderland. Big sculptures and sweet treats that are surely Instagram-worthy. Next is Jack's Ridge, one of the most popular recreational and dining destinations in Davao City. From your table, you get to experience an eagle's eye view of Davao. It's even nicer here, so you could see how wonderful the city lights. And now let's move on to the Bone Collector Museum. Here you can see well-preserved skeletons of various animals from different environments. The 41 feet sperm whale in this museum was found dead on the shore. And during that time, they discovered a lot of plastics and garbages in its belly. Yes, this museum is a sobering reminder of how our actions can often have a devastating impact on our environment. That's right. So, oh, a trip to a trip to Davao wouldn't be complete without checking out the Samal Island. Here are some resorts and beaches you can find here. You can also enjoy island hopping with your friends and family, and these places are really perfect for your Instagram feed. And if you're interested to try Filipino street foods, let's go straight to the Rojas Night Market. I think one of the best way to discover and get to know other culture and people is through food, right? I totally, yeah, I totally agree. Charcoals get lit up from 5.30 p.m. each night. You can enjoy robust sit-down meals, barbecue, and more. Jam and I, together with our friends, we usually go here after school. Yeah, it's a great place to hang out with friends and satisfy street food cravings. Here are must-try street foods in Davao. The first one is Quek Quek, one of the famous foods. We use whole chicken eggs coated in orange butter, then fry till crispy. The second one is Isao. These are barbecued chicken intestines, very delicious when you pair it with rice. The third one is Balut, a popular street food this is a fertilized egg that has been incubated for approximately 18 days. And lastly, the halo halo. It is the best for summertime treat. It is layered dessert consisting of sweetened beans, fruits, shaved ice drizzled with evaporated milk and ice cream. So what are you waiting for? We hope to see you personally soon here. So Dabao Life is here. Thank you. Daghang salamat. Thank you very much for that presentation. I'm so glad we got those technical issues solved. <laughs> that presentation was absolutely worth it. Um, does anyone have any questions for Gail and Khalil? Yes, thank you so much for such an amazing presentation. Um, I just have a quick question. Uh, could you do some scuba diving around the area as well? Yes, in yeah, Samo yeah. Islands, there are actually a lot of um, scuba diving spots here. Very beautiful. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, your presentation really has everything. It has everything from like the beach holiday with island hopping and scuba diving and snorkeling to like mm -hmm. street food to like um, learning about sustainability because you guys have shown us like how your city is a leading example in practicing and, and, and uh, enforcing sustainable practices. So thank you so much because I feel like I really learned a lot and I truly want to visit you guys. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. Thank you. So next up, we're going to go somewhere that's very close to my heart because this is my home, Singapore. So uh, from the 
Para Singapore TP student chapter, we have with us today Jolene and Marilyn. Uh, both of them are pursuing the, a diploma in hospitality and tourism management at Tomasic Polytechnic, and we're very happy to have them here with us today. Hi, guys. Yeah, hi, my name is Marilyn. Jolene, you must unmute yourself. <laughs> hi, I'm Jolene. So please, take us to Singapore. Well, just in case you didn't catch that, my name is Marilyn and this is my partner Jolene. We're from the Singapore TP student chapter and today we're going to go on a journey to Tampines, a neighborhood in the east just 15 minutes away from Changi Airport. For your information, it's pronounced as Tampines and not Tampines, as many people presume. So, what are we waiting for? Let me show you around our hometown. Our first stop will be our Tampines Hub. Open in 2017, it is Singapore's largest integrated community and lifestyle hub with many facilities available to the public, such as a library, sports facilities, hawker centers, and retail shops. It is also a place where visitors can eat, play, have fun, study, and exercise. We can really witness the everyday life of locals here at Tampines Hub. Have you ever watched Maze Runner? Have you ever wanted to try a maze for yourself? Well, just located outside of our Tampines Hub is the Tampines Maze Garden. Put your puzzle solving skills to the test here and try to solve this maze. And if you want a bit more excitement, head over to the Wayside Maze located directly behind this one and maybe play a round of tech with your friends. We will also be taking a group shot here to commemorate the day. A playground shaped like a fruit? Doesn't that sound fascinating? Well, we have one here in Tampines. Behind our Tampines Hub, located in Tampines Central Park, is a watermelon playground. Opened in the 1980s, this playground was built by HDB architect Miss Lee Loy Kriwa and was inspired by the fruit farms of rural Tampines before the town was built. It brings many nostalgic childhood memories to the locals and we'll be spending some time here exploring the playground. Thereafter, we will head to the Tampines West Community Club's Paper Crane Mural. Titled Home, it was created by Sam Lowe, a former TP student and a self-taught, Singapore-based, non-binary visual artist whose work revolves around social commentaries. The piece pays homage to the everyday essentials you can only find in the heartlands, such as the Saram Uncles in Mama Shop Adorn, the Good Morning Tower many Singaporeans use, and tra the traditional tail of calendars. Why paper cranes, you may ask? Well, some say it represents hope as we start from the paper cranes we first learn to fall as children, and as we grow, grow and soar, we bring a little piece of our home and background with us. So without further ado, Jolie will be continuing the tour. So after all that walking, why not we cool off and take a short break at a cafe called Three's a Crowd? And if you have a sweet tooth, then you're in luck. This cozy cafe was started by three secondary school friends, and they serve artisanal ice cream, waffles, cakes, and coffee. From the classic ice cream flavor, cookies and cream, to unique flavors like berries, cheesecake, we have plenty of options to choose from to satisfy your sweet tooth. Thereafter, we will head to Tampanese Round Market and Food Center. It has been upgraded to include child-friendly and wheelchair-friendly facilities. It also has unique A-shaped roof that resembles the kampong villages of Tampanese yesteryear. Isn't it fascinating? As Singaporeans, we are proud of our hawker culture and local food. This food centre is famous for its tose, which is a South Indian teen pancake and pork rib prawn noodles. But not to worry if you do not, if you do not like those food mentioned, as there is a wide array of choice available for you. After a hearty meal, we will be heading to Tomasic Polytechnic, where our campus is located. You must be curious about what our campus looks like. The campus feels like our second home as we feel comfortable here. Also, we are the only polytechnic beside a reservoir. Being beside a reservoir, we are able to head there during breaks to enjoy the fresh air. Just five minutes walk away from our campus, we will walk to the Badok Reservoir. It is an area where many joggers engage in their exercise, people walk their dogs here, and our very own TP kayaking team also trains here. Lastly, we will have our meal at a peaceful and tranquil place just by the reservoir 
at Wawawa Bistro, which is famous for its mini cheeseburger. Doesn't it look delicious? So we hope that you had fun and at the same time got to know our hometown better and we certainly want you to be back. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jolene and Marilyn. That was great. Um, Khalil, do you have a question for them? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I really like the presentation, the destination. And I have a question about the food. So what are the top foods there that you like to recommend? Can you repeat your question? What's the top? What are the top two foods that that there you like to recommend? Ah, the top two food that we like in Tampines. Um, as she said just now, there there was um the the uh, pork rib prawn noodles. That's one food that I would recommend trying because it's very delicious. Another food that um I recommend is. The Singapore Singapore is kind of famous for its chicken rice actually. So I recommend trying the chicken rice here in Singapore as well. That's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jolene and Marilyn, for a trip around Tampanese. Um Tampanese is a heartland in Singapore. It's in local neighborhood and I really miss I really miss Singapore and I'm, I'm feeling a bit homesick right now. So thank you very much for that glimpse into your neighborhood and your hometown. Thank you. So we have actually come to the end of our Pada Youth Cross Culture Exchange event. So we want to do a poll for the audience where we're going to decide based on the popular vote where we're going to go exactly after this um, global pandemic is over and we can all start traveling again. Because at the end of the day, this entire event was only possible because it's part of the Pada's Dream to Travel Festival. And as the name suggests, all of us really like to dream about traveling. So this was an exercise in um, learning about everyone's culture, learning about different foods, different cultural traditional dances, what different destinations have to offer. And I'm really happy that we had an opportunity to hear what type of culture the youth think are the best parts to share with us. So I'm really glad for that. So I encourage everyone to vote in the poll. It's really just something that is lighthearted and we want to know where you want to go. You also can choose more than one choice. So please, everyone, let's vote. Um, I also want to say thank you to all the participants who spent time and effort curating a one-day itinerary for us. So everyone, can you please turn on your video and join me again? Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> so it's really nice to be able to see all of your faces at one shot, uh, at one time. And I just wanted to for us to all be able to see each other as we finish the poll. So almost everyone has voted. Um, and the results are pretty interesting. So share the poll results. Drum roll, please. Ta-da! Um, New Zealand, Roxy and Hansi. <laughs> you guys have won the popular vote by 34%, but followed very closely by Philippines, Gail, Khalil. You're all welcome here. Very welcome. Uh, we also, the votes are really, really close, everyone, because at 30% for third place, we also have Australia and Bangladesh tied at the same, at the same percentage of 30%. So every, I, I'm, I'm just, I just want to go everywhere. <laughs> I just want to travel everywhere. So thank you very much for joining us today and for voting in our poll and for traveling and backpacking with us across time and space and Asia Pacific. <laughs> Um, can we share that? So, we want to do a quick Q&A session from the audience. 
We want to do a quick Q&A session from the audience where we kind of like have an opportunity to talk and answer your questions. Uh, so if anyone has any questions in the audience, please use the Q&A function down below so that we can answer your questions. Um, and we've really been using the chat. So there's a lot in the chat as well. Um, and everyone's just saying like, oh, we want to go to Macau and someone's craving dim sums. Someone else said, we can't wait to visit Davos. It really sounds amazing. So yes. Or if the student chapters have questions to ask each other, please feel free. I actually wanted to ask the Philippines, sorry, a question. Um, because I really, really want to go there and I'm wondering what it's like there at the moment if you're still on lockdown because I know some chapters are all working from home and some people are back at uni. So I was wondering, you know, how long is it going to be till I can come? Yes, here in Davao, it's still, we're still on lockdown and um, I'm not really sure yet if people are still allowed to travel around here. So yeah, hopefully when when everything's okay, we will really welcome you here. Thank you. Hopefully next year. Yes. Hi Ali, can I answer this this question? Because there uh there's one uh there's one audience who asked about our university. Yes, please. Uh, uh she asked, um, does the university offer any tourism courses? Yeah, uh, University of Mindanao offers uh, a tourism course and also a hospitality course. It is a four-year degree. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. So most of, to, to be clear, most of our student chapter members and leaders as students, most of us are all tourism students and all the universities that we represent do have tourism courses. So it is it is pretty it is pretty a passionate community because all of us here really study tourism because we love it because we believe that it can change the world for a better yeah um we have one question for the singapore student chapter uh regina asks what's so special about chicken rice and actually chicken rice is considered one of singapore's uh, national dish it's it's a really simple dish actually with rice. You can there's a special kind of rice sometimes used called a uh, fragrant rice, uh, in English. Um, but yet it has a lot of taste. So uh, I I guess that simplicity attracts a simplicity yet delicious taste attracts a lot of people. So you actually can enjoy it with a soy sauce or a garlic chili dip. But if you if you like spicy food, yeah. Yeah. I have friends in Singapore who swear by the special chili sauce that comes with chicken rice and it's one of their favorite foods. Okay, um, I really encourage the audience to send in questions. This is a rare moment where you can like kind of uh, ask questions and exchange ideas and everything. From our student chapters, are there any more questions that you want to ask each other? Um, earlier, Pauline did ask Surendra from Pada Nepal student chapter about Lumbini. So I'm just going to ask Surendra to kind of repeat his answer for Pauline since that was in a chat, uh, since that was in, a, in the chat function. Um, so Pauline's question was, uh, we earlier had a life experience tour in Lumpini by Pada. Uh, can you share with us how your experience was, your personal experience, and have you gone there before? So, Surendra, where are you? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you very much for the question, Pauline. Uh, well, actually, I, I was born and raised around Lumbini, and uh, in my childhood, I mean, like, uh, when I used to ride a bicycle, uh, we, I mean, uh, I, along with my friends, we used to go to look we used to visit Lumini uh, by riding bicycle, and uh, it, it would be a one-day trip. Uh, in the morning, we start our trip, and in the evening, we return. Sometimes uh, it would have been like uh, late in the in the night as well. And uh, the most important thing is that when you enter into the Lumini premise, 
you will feel so peace i mean uh, your body will will be in a state of peace you will feel really a very good i mean uh, peaceful environment out there they there are a lot of things to do like meditation and uh, there are so many monasteries temples monuments and structures out there and there's also a, a facility to i mean uh, of a boat in and then, uh, from my dev temple to the wall piece stupa which i showed you in the picture earlier uh th there is a <clears throat> like a, a a kind of a, ca a canal and uh, it's a bit big so that we can uh, have a ride in a motorboat and uh, there there is also a meditation center where you can uh, have meditation it is like uh, for one week and uh, depending up, upon your requirement uh, they'll just uh, arrange a, a meditation class uh, for you and other thing is that uh, like uh, the monuments and structures they are really historically i mean important and also rich in architecture the architecture is really awesome and there are there are like uh, monasteries from many countries like the thai monastery uh, monastery from uh, uh, i think uh, the monasteries from uh, like uh, southeast asian countries like myanmar uh, vietnam and other Buddhi buddhist uh, countries um there are so many monasteries and uh, you know like having really good art and cult i mean reflecting reflecting the buddhist culture and uh, a bit uh, combining with the hindu culture as well so it's it's a kind of a experience that you will have in your lifetime and uh, one day is never enough to re uh, i mean uh, visit whole lumini so it's a bit big and you know uh, every every time you uh, enter into a premise of a temple you feel like uh, staying there i mean for you know like a bit longer time to experience to see all the beauty out there so so it's it's really an amazing experience out there so i i i like it uh, sounds like a very meditative experience as well like you yeah. kind of sit and soak up the nature and the beauty that's surrounding you thank yeah. you so much, <laughs> thank you very much okay we have a question for the new zealand chapter from ivan wang um which driving route would you recommend for a self driving tour in new zealand hansi and roxy would you be able to answer that question yes uh, if you want to go to rotorua and if you want to go to the hobbiton so better to use the southern highway 16 so if you want to go to the other side of the up north in the fangre and the cape ranga so the travelers can use northern motorway so that's the easiest way it's two different directions southern highway or northern motorway and also um if you if you want to rent a car it depends how long you you're here but it's actually uh cheaper for you to buy like an old crappy car that'll be around 2000 or 3000 dollars because then you can have it for a few months and you can go all the way to the south island and back because if you rent a car you'll be paying like daily rates and that's really expensive and you can always sell the car back because a lot of people come here and backpack and buy old cars and sell their old cars so that's actually the cheapest way to drive around as well so and i think we should mention this one as well if you want to travel to south thailand so better to uh, fly from auckland to south thailand from there you can hire a car and you can travel around but if you have a lot of time you can still drive yes. and put your car on the local ferry So there's a little there's a boat that goes from the North Island to the South Island and you can put your car on the boat. Thank you for all that practical advice as well as the suggestion to take a very long holiday to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah. Just you know like 3 months. Yes. Yeah. Um, just yeah. Like, let's just drop everything and go for 3 months. <laughs> That would be amazing. It's just a lot to see. Yes. Ivan, I hope that answered your questions and I hope you were taking notes. So thank you very much guys. Okay um I think we will end this culture exchange session this was the first culture exchange session that Tada Youth has organized and it was really a roaring success because of the time and effort that you guys put into it so thank you very much to each and every one of you for coming here to share your stories and share your culture with us we all learned a lot even if we've been to the countries before we've learned a lot so thank you very much um congratulations once again to the popular vote winners of the poll new zealand <laughs> philippines australia bangladesh you guys are great um to everyone else 
we still love you. We still want to go. Don't worry. We're coming. <laughs> so uh, before I end, I just want to, um, so I've said thank you, but before I end, I just want to say that if you have any questions or if you want to uh, do this cultural exchange program again for yourself, for your organization, your company or your university, please contact me. That's my email address right there. There's also more information on how to join our community as a youth on pada.org slash YTP. Uh, and once again, this event was part of PADA's Dream to Travel Festival. So coming up next in our festival is actually a live experience, yoga at Barcelona in Spain. Um, it's going to be great. Uh, my, colleague who's, uh, my colleague who's emceeing this session later, we've all been teasing her the whole week that she has to do an entire yoga class um, during work and that's a great experience for her. So join us for the next live experience. and. At the end of this week, uh, for the Pada Youth, we have an opportunity to actually ask Chloe Lim, who is the Head of Marketing for Facebook, uh, questions on uh, career advice and marketing questions, as well as leadership questions. Because, because Chloe is a very uh, well-respected leader in her area and her expertise. And we want to ask her questions like, how can we get more young Asian women in leadership positions? What needs to be done by us? What needs to be done by the companies themselves? Or we're also going to ask her questions like, what myths uh, are, can we bust for a marketing career? And what assumptions do we need to get rid of if we want to look at a career in marketing? So this is a unique opportunity to also ask her your own questions during the Q&A. So please join us for our very last fireside chat uh, for the Dream to Travel Festival. Um, and lastly, thank you very much everyone for, thank you very much everyone for joining us. This was a great experience and please keep connected and keep sharing and talking and being together as a community. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you.